Great and, and welcome. Um, this is the, the first webinar in, in our series this, this month, um, kind of all focused around our new program, a ARM Mobile. Um, so today's session is, is you know, basically a set of PowerPoint slides to, to talk about what it's all about. Um, and here you can see we do have a couple more webinars coming up uh, really on training for some ARM features that I think are, are great in their own right, but especially themed for ARM Mobile that will be, be very helpful for you to hit the ground running um, if, if you're looking to, to use the ARM Mobile. So we'll be covering uh, SEs, standard evaluations, and also uh, some validation list, um, working on, on building up your, your personal lists. And so we, we kind of split that content up. Kind of we'll talk specifically for protocol writers in, in the first session, um, you know, kind of more on the planning side of using SEs to, to plan out and instruct. And then our second session will be for trialists for utilizing where to know if, if an SE has been included, um, building your lists and things like that. And then finally, our last session, um, more back on just the ARM software itself for, for what's new, um, what have been the new changes this last year in the software for you to, to maybe, you know, become acquainted with and, and utilize this this next season. So with that, we will dive in here then to the presentation here to introduce uh, ARM Mobile. And so ARM Mobile is an app for taking notes in the field. And you can do this either on iOS or Android devices. This app is really going to extend ARM to the field without requiring an internet connection during note taking. You can leverage ARM's consistency tools like the validation lists and, and SE standard evaluations across all of your note takers. You can take plot photos with ARM Mobile and they will be renamed and cataloged with the ARM trial file back in the office. Also, you can review the data immediately after the assessment to maximize your assessment quality. So our development uh, for ARM Mobile really focused on the, the core principles of quality research. Um, you need to enter data immediately at the trial location um, is, is an important part. Uh, consistency in assessments um, is, is, a big, is a big focus. And that has to extend across you know, multiple dates, different note takers, and even across locations. So the standardization features that are, are deployed with ARM Mobile can, can really help um, with, with this effort. The only way to ensure data integrity is, is to review the data while you're still at the trial site. And visualization of the data is, is the most efficient way to catch mistakes, irregularities. And so ARM Mobile um, has, has that uh, functionality with, with kind of a heat map. Finally, data transfer should occur in a professional manner. You, you don't want to transcribe from paper to computer and not copy and paste from file to file. Um, the more human touch you have in moving data, the, the greater chance of, of errors happening. So it, it should be uh, automatic and, and that's really what ARM Mobile uh, offers. <clears throat> so here's kind of a, a look at the, the workflow with, with ARM Mobile and how it, it interfaces with, with ARM. So the first component is the base information from your ARM software. This is primarily your, your favorites lists. Um, it, typically we've, we've called them personal lists in the past, but actually we're, we're rolling out with some new features here this next year to kind of make it even easier to use. So really take all your personal lists from, from your ARM that are related to data entry. Specifically, that includes standard evaluations, the assessed by list, which becomes basically your list of ARM mobile users, um, your crops and your pests that you commonly use, and the, the assessment related lists, like the part rated measurement units, things like that. So all of this information is then saved to a cloud storage service, 
We support Dropbox, OneDrive, or Google Drive uh, on, on the PC. So, so one of those programs would be running on your computer and your ARM software would then copy that information into that folder. <clears throat> then ARM Mobile downloads that base info during the installation and setup of the app on your phone. Next, uh, looking at the individual trial files, it's, uh, we're really working with the trial definition being sent to the cloud, not the entire ARM trial file itself. So this trial definition consists of the SE definitions list, columns without data, attachments, and some site details of that trial. This information is then saved in the trial def folder in the cloud and imported into AR Mobile. After using the mobile app to record data, take pictures, review the assessments, then you export the data back to the cloud when internet is available. ARM then automatically imports the data into the trial file on the computer when that file is opened. So it'll detect that uh, that data has been exported into the cloud. And so just on your main computer, ARM will automatically import that data in uh, when, you're, when you're working with that file next. <clears throat> so kind of a look, uh, a peek at the app and, and the, the workflow within the app for, for taking notes. Um, you know, the first step is to, to import the trial definitions from the cloud storage. So at that step, internet is required, you know, to actually download those definitions onto the device. Next, you select the trials to rate in, this cur in your current note-taking session. And really from this point on, you don't need internet. So once you've downloaded those definitions, then if you're out in the field without you know, uh, internet or, or cell coverage, uh, this is all can be, can be done offline, uh, selecting which trials that you've already downloaded uh, to take, take ratings. Now you'll record the data, which can include pictures or comments. Um, you can even exclude that value from, from the analysis. Oop, I think I'm behind here, there we go. So there's buttons for, for um, the value, uh, the, the rating, if you have a scale, they'll just present some buttons for the individual scale values. Uh, otherwise you would type in your um, value. And as I mentioned, exclude pictures and, and comment are all uh, components of that assessment that you can, you can also record. So you can review the assessment with the heat map. So this is a great way to catch issues and review the assessment before leaving the site. So essentially it takes the lowest assessment value and the highest assessment value, um, lowest being white, highest that dark red, and then just gives a gradient. So you can see spatially um, the, the assessment and maybe catch any outliers, whether there's a, there's a really, really high value, really low value compared to the others. Finally, uh, you would export the data back to the cloud when internet is, is available again. So you can take all the ratings and review. And then once your device is at a spot where you have internet connection, then you export those assessments out to the cloud uh, to be picked up by, by Aaron. All right, so kind of looking at the licensing, uh, to, to utilize AR Mobile in your organization, a connection and a data plan is required. So really two steps here. The, the first step would be the, the connection, which we're calling the Electronic Data Collector or EDC uh, connection. <clears throat> so that is really the connection between the ARM software and the data collection apps like ARM Mobile. At a technical level, this enables ARM to export your trial definitions and that base info to be used by ARM Mobile. So this EDC 
also includes the tablet data collector add-in, the TDCX. And if you have a, a current active TDCX license, you get a free upgrade to EDC. So if you already are, are using, using a tablet, uh, you, may, you may already be, be upgraded to this, this first step here of having that connection. So if, so if you have a TDCX, a license active, that is, is really essentially now uh, converted to an EDC. So you have this connection part and still of course can use that tablet. Nothing is changing on, on that side of the fence. The second step then is to purchase a data plan. So data points exported from ARM Mobile are counted anonymously. So we don't, GDM isn't gonna see any of your data. ARM simply is just going to tally up the, the data points and um, as, as that data is coming in. And so a data point would be um, kind of at the subsample level. So if you have just one value per plot, you know, it's just gonna be one data point um, per, per plot that you're bringing in. If you did five or 10 subsamples per plot, each of those subsample values is a data point. Um, pictures, however, don't count towards that total. So it's really just the value and whether or not there's a picture is irrelevant from this tallying standpoint. So then we will uh, count up, kind of tally up all of the data points um, across the, the, the company invoice. So we're really gonna you know, tally and build this per company invoice. So you only need one plan per, per group. And we've structured it this way so that the ARM mobile app itself is free. That way it can be used on as many devices as you would like. There's no activation, no registration um, that would have to happen on each individual device. We, we, won't, we won't even know how many devices are out there using ARM mobile. Um, we're just gonna be present at that, that connection standpoint and when the data is being brought in. And hopefully that'll really provide a lot of flexibility, I think, in, in how companies implement AR mobile. So I think there'll be a lot of, a lot, a lot of opportunities based on how you take data uh, to be able to be really flexible to have AR mobile um, fit in with that flow and, and help you kind of maximize your, your data collection. So the goal here, hopefully, is, is to modernize your, your data collection uh, with, with GDM and with ARM Mobile. Um, so you know, really, ARM Mobile is, is joining the tablet data collector as the industry, industry standard methods uh, for recording data within the, the ARM system. Uh, so we're not, we're not really replacing the TDCX, um, which actually matches right with, with the question I see that came in. We're, we're not replacing TDCX. And, and we really feel that um, it's going to be two options. Um, some companies may choose one or the other based on their needs. I can see some companies maybe using both. And that was part of our, our strategy. Um, I'll go back one slide just to point out that was kind of our strategy with, with the connection is that um, it'll, it'll just provide the opportunity to take data and then you can choose and we'll work with you, you know, we'll discussions on, you know, let us know how you typically work and then we can recommend um, what would, would work really well for you in that case. Um, but I think it'll provide a lot of flexibility to choose one or the other or both and how best to roll that out for, for your group to really maximize um, the, the way you're taking data. Other question, while we're looking at this data plan, uh, the, the pricing. And so um, you, can, you can get specific pricing from your representative. I know we have um, a good international presence here, um, but I'll read off of my, my price sheet in, in the US. Um, it, it, and again, your, your representative can provide exact numbers for, for you, but the uh, kind of the introductory price we're including here, um, to get one connection and the, the, the data plan for your company will be $399 um, US, again, here in the US. Uh, pricing them individually, um, depending on how large your group is, um, the connection itself is $275. 
So if you had more than one person who you would want to have that connection, essentially who, who in my group should be the one to export their personal lists and who should be in charge of exporting those trial definitions and importing the data back in. If, if you want just one person, you only need one connection. Maybe within your company, there's you know four different groups. And so I could think of four different individuals that are kind of the head of those groups. Maybe each one of them should have a connection. So each, each one of those connections will be 275. And then the data plan is $250 US. Um, and that is for every 50,000 data points. Um, a, a little background on that, that data point number. Um, we, we went out and tried to uh, do a little research on what's a typical you know, size of a trial and how many data points would be a typical amount. Because really our target for the data plan was 90% of clients should all fit in, in that one, that first bucket of, of data plan. So wherever we set that level to, we want almost everyone to only, you know, to be in that size. Um, pretty quickly, we realized there's no such thing as a regular <laughs> normal amount. It really, really varied. So, so we settled at the, the 50,000 data points. Um, if you, if your company exceeds that amount, we aren't going to shut off the program or anything like that. We're, we definitely don't want to, to hold data hostage by any stretch. Really all we'll do is, is ARM will just keep tallying. And then at the time of year where your annual maintenance is due, we will just tally up those points used across the company. And let's say you came in at you know, 80,000 data points. Well, we'll say then, okay, that was one, you know, that was more than one data plan. So we will charge you for two data plans that following year. And so that would be 250 plus 250, 500 total. So, so we're not going to shut anything off um, by, by any means. And it'll just be at the end of the year when your maintenance comes due, we'll just tally them up and say, all right, that's how much it was. So um, this will be the number of data plans um, for, for that following year, essentially. Because um, we, we definitely don't want, our goal with the data plan is, is so that it's a large enough number, that 50,000, that nobody thinks about the data points. <laughs> you know, we don't want people thinking, hmm, should I use the mobile app to take data or something else? Um, oh, this is a lot of data points. Maybe I shouldn't use the app. It, it, we don't want to nickel and dime anyone. We really just want this to be um, you know, very affordable. Uh, really, our goal is to just stay, stay relevant and present in the industry. Um, so, so that's the strategy, I guess, fr from our standpoint for the licensing. And hopefully then um, the, the data plan is, is just a, a theoretical discussion when you first first purchase and you find out after the first year that uh, it doesn't matter. <laughs> that's, that's our goal, um, that the data plane is just, just a bullet point on your invoice that you see, and, and that's about it. So that, that's the goal there. I'll just wrap up my slides here and then I'll keep, keep going with the questions. That, that's very great. This is actually my last slide, so we're, we're right at the end anyway. Um, but again, just, just to kind of hammer home that um, we, we want to be present in the industry and we want um, you know, ARM users to be able to, to really bring a lot of the, the, the consistency features of ARM, bring that to the field. Um, and we have that with the tablet data collector, um, but there, you know, there are certain hurdles with, with that offering, uh, the requirement for a Windows-based tablet, um, the, the license to be able to put on that tablet. And so, especially in some areas of the world, it's, it's a lot harder to obtain that hardware. Um, in some cases, that, that expense and, the, and this internal support to have another device was, was challenging. And so uh, we think AR Mobile would be another option um, because everyone has a phone. Um, many people have iPads. You could use an iPad, um, you know, devices like that, that previously, you, you can't run the full ARM software on it. 
but now we'll have this, this mobile app uh, to have part of ARM on these other devices. Um, that's, really, that's really the big picture goal here. And definitely, I think, uh, especially as we first roll this out, we're really thinking it's not so much just checkbox, this is what I want, but more of a discussion. I think there'll be really great discussions you can have with your GDM representative of you know how how you currently take data, the the you know the options that uh, we we have between the mobile app and the tablet data collector, and and then your representative can kind of give give some recommendations of how how best to to take data with ARM. All right, with that, I will turn again to to the questions. Um, So one question was about that EDC connection. I'll just kind of keep going back and forth between our slides um, to reiterate the EDC connection that is required only for the ARM license, or maybe even maybe even a simpler way to say it would be only the AR, the computer with ARM running on it that will be in charge of exporting that base info and the trial definitions. So you do not need to get an EDC connection for every ARM user in your organization. And you would not, definitely would not need a connection for every ARM mobile app user in, in your company. You could have just one person be that, you know, that headquarters that will set up the information out to the cloud um, or you could have have several, and then you would have multiple connections. But it's really just the the ARM software running on that that Windows computer, wherever that is. Who should be the the head person, the one in charge for that? And if you need more than one, you would just need multiple connections, and that's really an add-in to an existing ARM license, you know, onto an existing ARM computer somewhere. Next question is, is a great question. I think one of the most uh, exciting things, at least in my mind, as to what ARM mobile will, will bring. And so the question is if three, <clears throat> excuse me, if three mobile units each collect a third of the data from a trial, maybe there's three replicates and we say, all right, um, e all three of you each take a replicate uh, and then come back. You know, if you have a lot of subsamples, really time consuming assessment, uh, you can't have just one person, you know, take those notes. This ARM mobile will support essentially merging that data back exactly as that person had asked. So one of the advantages I think to the ARM mobile, and if I go back here one slide to see the, um, hope I'll go one farther back here to see that connection uh, and the data flow is we are exporting the, the definition of the trial, not the trial file itself. So um, you can have each phone, you know, the three people that are, are ready to take the assessment, they can each have ARM mobile on their phone. They'll each connect to the cloud and be able to utilize that trial definition. And so they can record you know, the first person can take replicate one and record just replicate one information on their phone and export that data out to the cloud. And then the second phone will export just the second replicate and so on and so forth. Then the ARM software running on the computer, when it imports that data in, it will import each of those individual, you know, exported data packages from, from ARM mobile into each of the, the plots where it goes. So I, I think that'll be a great opening to have anyone out there taking notes in the field um, participate. And you, you can definitely have um, uh, diff the different devices split up a single assessment column. So that is, that is a definite yes. And that is one limitation that the TDCX tablet does not have. So with the TDCX, you are in the trial file itself because you're running the full ARM. So you can't have multiple tablets, you know, directly accessing the same file. 
So this AR Mobile will be more flexible in that regards to split up the work and have multiple phones working on the same assessment, as long as they're not working on the same plot, of course. You would, you would end up having one, one phone would overwrite the other phone if uh, you know, there, there'd be that issue if they were taking um, data on the same plot, of course. So that's, that's a great question and really highlights a, a great feature, I think, of the way this is structured. All right, next question. Um, sharing data, can we share data two ways with our own account and with a client's account when we sync? Um, so I guess I'll take maybe a, a bit of a guess as to, to what you would mean, but you certainly would be able to set up multiple, I'll call them multiple iterations of this cloud uh, setup if, if you needed to. So, so I could see maybe if, if you were a sponsor that had a trialist who does not use ARM, maybe they, they, they won't use ARM. You could maybe in theory create a folder like in, in Dropbox um, to export their trials and, and information to a specific folder that you could then share with them and their phones then could access and put data in there. And then you could replicate that idea with a separate whole set of folders for another client or for your own internal um, trials that you're taking, things like that. It would just be, it would just be toggling that ARM software that has that connection um, to, to point at the different folders um, when you're setting it up. But that, that would, be, would be possible. We could kind of step you through that, uh, a little hard to visualize now, um, but we could, we could kind of show you how to set that up. Next question, what if we collect multiple data points in a plot and then average? So, so hopefully I think we covered, covered that question um, that you can, oh, no, actually, let me, let me read that again. So if you're collecting multiple data points in a plot and then you average, so that would be kind of the choice for how you set up your assessment. So much like just in ARM software right now, you can have an assessment column have five subsamples or 10 subsamples. And then there's an individual value for each of those subsamples that is put in. Then in the analysis, of course, you get a plot average and we do the statistics, et cetera. It would be kind of the same thing with, with the mobile app, how you set up that assessment. You can have multiple data points um, that you record with the phone, or you could just have the one subsample that you enter in. And maybe that one value that you type per plot is averaged in your mind as you're making that assessment. That, that choice would be yours. Um, I think in general, um, from a general standpoint, a, a best practice would be to, to record all the, the data. It might be very informative for somebody to see the spread of those individual values, but that's kind of outside, outside this discussion of, of the mobile app. Next question about an audio entry option uh, instead of typing on a keypad. So the ARM mobile app that we offer um, does not have a, a voice entry option. However, um, and if I move over a couple of slides here, part of this flexibility in, in the licensing that we have is you don't have to just use the AIRA mobile app. So if, if you purchase the connection and the data plan, that's gonna open up this um, structure and the ability to export your information. And you could use a different application to take your notes, as long as that application can interface with our file structure. So we're currently working with a few companies for uh, their applications. And there's actually two of them that support the, the um, voice commands. 
to actually take, take notes with just your spoken word. So if you're familiar, if you've heard of either of these companies, uh, Smatrix, uh, based out in, in, in Europe, and then there's also a company, I, I believe they're based in Canada or, or maybe the US, uh, VDTS. So there are a couple of companies we're working with currently. Uh, we're definitely open to working with other companies um, that may have note-taking apps. Uh, but those two I just rattled off are ones that do support the, the, the voice uh, data entry. And so instead of the mobile app, which I showed pictures of there, you would, you, <coughs> excuse me, you would work with that company uh, to purchase their application, which can then interface with our base info trial definition um, workflow that, that we've discussed today. So hopefully that, that helps. I think that's an exciting part moving forward uh, uh, for other, other applications to, to take part in this. And, and um, our representative Baron here from Germany, th thanks for that note that um, if you have internet access in the field, um, like an iPhone has some voice recognition functionality. Um, so you may be able to leverage that even without those other applications. Again, internet access, I think, is required to utilize that function of iPhone. Not certain if Google has something you know, on the Android side of things. I haven't personally used, but there may be some opportunities. Just you know, the, the native device on your phone might have some sort of voice recognition. So that's a great point, too, to maybe play around with a little bit just to see if on your phone you'd be able to um, utilize some of that functionality without even needing a separate application. Great questions. All right, I gotta scroll back up to find find the next one. Um, so this next question is a scenario where there's you know, maybe six ARM licenses uh, currently working on on the same files. Some of those have the tablet license for, for field assessing. Yeah, so, so if you already have some tablet licenses that are working with taking notes, then you already have step one. So those tablets, the ARM, you know, you have that ARM with the TDCX running on that device. So that ARM, you will see here soon that TDCX is being converted into this EDC connection. So on that tablet, you'll be able to export your personal list and export your trial definitions to a cloud folder. So that way you could utilize ARA Mobile as well. So in that case, your company would just need a data plan. And again, you can kind of get a hold of your representative um, to see exactly how to make sure that gets added. But yeah, you would really just need to add the data plan. So if, if you were in the US, it'd be 250 US dollars um, to, to you know, turn on that data plan for this coming year, and you'll be good to go. You'd be able to start setting up your, your AR mobile folders and, and get your phones connected up to that. And now you'll have multiple options. You can use the tablet and or AR mobile uh, all in unison, perhaps. So again, the, the key was having the tablet license. If you currently have a TDCX that is active being used, that TDCX is basically being upgraded automatically to this EDC. So you can use that device to export and, and interface with the AR mobile. Next question, if you can see ratings that have already been taken. And that would be no. So in the Air Mobile app, we only send the data columns that don't have data in them. So part of that trial definition is, is only assessment columns without data in them. And then within the app, after you've taken data, of course, you can review that data. But when you export the assessment, then that column disappears from the app. So that way you don't accidentally export again and overwrite anything. 
Um, there is just from a from a data security standpoint, data protection standpoint. Uh, after you've exported the data, the application itself has has a backup of that data. So if something went wrong on the cloud side, um, there's still a way to recover that data, but you won't see it visually in the application. Um, it's it's kind of in the system logs. And you know if you did have any have any issues like that, you know just just give your representative a call, and we would step you through the the process for accessing. That, that backup data. So the short answer, uh, no, previous assessments are, are not visible in the application. Of course, you can always view them in the ARM file because uh, ARM will have all that data. So the release date for ARM Mobile is kind of today. <laughs> so we, we um, here in the US, uh, we traveled to a convention uh, last week and, and kind of made a similar presentation. Um, so we are, we are able to uh, take, take orders and, and start to work with you on how you'd want to implement this. Um, uh, certainly, we're, we are taking it slow with the new technology, so we're not pushing people very hard that, oh, you need this right away. Um, but, but those that want to take advantage, we can certainly start, start talking about it today and, and, and get you set up with, with what you would need. So next question, thinking about the head person doing that export for multiple trials would need to have the trials on their PC in order to export. So yes, the, the connection person, um, as we've said, uh, that person who would be in charge of sending personal lists and sending the trial definitions needs to have access to those trials. So if you're in a group uh, like that, the one group we talked about previously with the six licenses, perhaps all of their trial files are on a network drive, or maybe they're already using something like OneDrive that helps to have the, the ARM files on everyone's computer. In that scenario, you know, you would be able to have one person, uh, since they have access to all of the trials, be able to send them out. So that would be really where, um, if you're, if you had different groups in your organization, maybe they don't all see everyone else's files because they're kind of, you know, focused on one set of trials, and the second group focused on another set. That would be a situation where you would want multiple connections. So each of those groups would have one person who can see the trials and get them export. Next question here, uh, thinking about that scenario where we were having multiple phones, multiple mobile apps taking data uh, as part of the trial. Then the next day, they go out to do the same, same thing again, more data collection. Um, there's really two ways to approach that. Um, you can re-export the trial definition. Um, so that way, the essentially your list of assessment columns that are in the ARM trial itself um, is, is refreshed into the cloud. Let me go back to, to that slide again, just a point as to what part of the process I'm referring to. Um, so the trial definition, when we send that to the cloud, then you know on day one, we take a bunch of data, it comes into the cloud, goes into ARM. So now there's, you know, maybe we took two different assessments. So two of those assessments are now finished. You can, at the end of that day or the start of the next day um, in your ARM, export that definition again. And that would refresh the definition in the cloud to be reflective of what you have in that trial. Maybe you've added additional assessment columns. But of course, some of those columns have now went away um, because they now have data. So that would be a way to refresh what is in the cloud so that way each of your mobile phones have an updated version that they would just re-import from the cloud while they have internet connection before they go to the field. So that would be, that would be um, 
probably the best way to do that, especially if there are updates, additional assessments that you're adding to that trial file um, throughout the season is to re-export. But strictly speaking, that mobile phone, um, even if you didn't refresh, would still have that trial definition downloaded. So if you had scheduled out enough assessment columns for most of the year, um, you wouldn't have to refresh um, because you could keep using that same definition as long as there were the appropriate assessment columns planned out to take a rating. So hopefully, hopefully that helps. Um, see a question coming related to that. Uh, you can create an assessment column in the mobile app. So the uh, let's look at that slide here. I think one of my screenshots will show where that is. So uh, and this screenshot in the mobile app is where you're selecting the assessments. And so, yeah, primarily I've been referring to if you've pre-filled assessment columns in your trial file, they will appear in the app. There is a, a plus button here. So if you don't have a predefined assessment or you've realized once you're in the field, oh, there's a different pest here. I wasn't anticipating. I need to take an assessment for this or whatever the scenario is. There is a plus button so you can add an assessment column from the mobile app. And there's a couple of, couple of options for how you would add them. You can use an SE which is one of the reasons we're really pushing that in the training is to take advantage of standard evaluations. So that way the assessment header, that, that column description is already defined for you previously. So it's very quick in the mobile app to hit plus, select your SE and, and grab that and load that in. And you don't have to hand type anything for your description of your assessment. It's already there for you. Another option is to copy the assessment header from a, a, another column that you have in that trial definition. So if you're doing the same thing as yesterday, you could copy that description that's existing in your trial definition, copy that and use uh, and create a new assessment from that description you used last time. And then finally, there is an option to just go ad hoc, as we call it, totally, totally blank. And then you hand type with the phone or select from the list. You have to you know, fill in the details for that column. More time consuming, but it is an option uh, if, if need be. So that's, that's one of the big reasons we're pushing, pushing on SEs a lot in, in the training is I think it will be much easier, much more user friendly um, if you have that, those list of standard evaluation files available to you um, to be able to use real quickly and easily with the mobile app itself. So those are really the, the three sources, if you will, of, of assessment columns. All right, great questions. I'm going to keep chugging away here. Um, we did the voice recognition. Make sure I didn't miss one up here. If the mobile unit gets lost, what's in place to secure existing data and any confidentiality? I would say the mobile phone your, or your mobile unit, phone, tablet, whatever. Um, I think the security on that phone would be whatever security you have for logging into that device. So, so I believe both, both Apple and Android devices typically have a passcode or a fingerprint scanner, or I know Apple has the face ID. Those type of security um, features would really be your line of defense per se in that scenario um, if you misplaced your phone. Um, so that way a person can't access, you know, all of the information that's stored on that phone. Um, there, there is not a special login within the ARM mobile app. So it would just be the standard security you have set up for that device. <clears throat> Next question, is the app available on the Apple App Store? 
And we do not, we did not work with Apple or Google Play. So instead of it being in the app store, we have, it's called a web application essentially. So there's a specific URL that you would type into either Safari or Chrome, depending on your, your operating system. And so it still behaves like an application in that it downloads, you know, it downloads the, the app essentially on your phone. And then of course, as we saw, it downloads your, your lists and those trial definitions onto the phone. So it, it still functions like an app in that regards, but it just doesn't exist out in the, the Play Store or the, the, I, the Apple Store. Um, and then that way Apple doesn't get their cut and Google doesn't get their cut. And, and it's, uh, I think, more freely accessible then because um, it's just through the browser. And of course we can, we provide that, that URL um, again, to have as many, as many phones as you would like access the app. There is no, there is no charge, there's no fee to download that app. Next question, uh, they notice the set walking path in the app that is tied to ARM. Um, so whatever you may have in your ARM trial on the trial map, there's the movement arrows feature. Um, if you're familiar with that, to basically set the order you would move through your, your field. So if you typically work serpentine or across blocks or whatever order you would go through the field, that is the default sort order essentially for the plots in ARM Mobile. So you can just fill out a plot, hit enter to move to the next plot, and that'll logically be the next plot in that, that movement uh, direction or walking path is the term we used in Aaron Mobile. So that'll be, that will match the, what you have in the trial, but you can change it in Aaron Mobile. And that's why we have that button there is you can change that. Um, and again, that's just the order you're taking the data. So the data itself will import just the same, regardless of what order you took it in. Of course, it'll still be tied to, to its proper plot number and will be brought in uh, just the same. On that same screen, the pin trial location, that, that is tied to GPS. So that will read the GPS coordinates of your device as you're holding it standing right there in, in the field, greenhouse, wherever you're taking the notes. Um, that will utilize your device's GPS to read your current location and mark that as the location of the trial. You can, can also do that for each individual plot as well. If, if you wanted to have that, those coordinates for each of the plots, again, it would be right where you are standing, where that device is. So just remember if you're standing outside the plot, looking at the plot, um, you have to think of where, where that device is when you press that button, because that will be the coordinates that are used and saved. Next question about when a mobile unit is syncing back to the cloud, can the ARM system be set up to automatically email the trial sponsor that new data was uploaded? Um, so, so currently, no. Um, Typically, just within the ARM program, um, we don't have any functionality to automatically create emails. Um, the, the automatic portion of, of the ARM system with this ARM mobile is the fact that when the ARM software is open, the, the, the program where you have that connection to know where the, the Dropbox or OneDrive folder is at, um, when that ARM opens a trial, it will look to see if there's data. So, so yeah, not so much of an email notification, but the ARM software itself will detect when there's data. And on the flip side, you can also have ARM 
um, upload any data that's there. So maybe at the end of the day, that trial sponsor could simply go into the ARM and say, pull data from ARM mobile. And then it will just give them their study list. Which trials do you want to check to see if there's data to pull? And they could just select all. And then ARM mobile will look to see what data has come in from what you know, what trials and automatically bring all of them in all at once and give them a nice list of, of what was brought in. So that might that might be the better better approach to do it that way than relying on an email back and forth. But certainly um, you could hand enter an email since you'll have your, your device handy um, if you needed that, that notification. Next question on customized versions as well. Um, that might take a little testing um, for, for each of the, the customized versions. I know in general, um, we have some company contacts at some of those groups who have, who have asked to test out ARM Mobile. So I know it's possible to some extent, um, but I think some testing um, may be needed to, to say for sure, um, you know, each, each customized version, you know, each customization is, is of course a little different. Um, so I, I can't imagine a blanket statement of yes or no, we'll probably cover it. Uh, I think we take it case by case to see what ones, um, some may work better than others. Um, kind of just like their customization, if you've ever tried, if you've used the standard ARM and then switched it over to their version, you know, some pieces come with, some don't. Um, I think it would be a similar, similar situation with ARM mobile that obviously the, the, the data itself can come through, but maybe some of the header descriptions may, may or may not, just depending on how things are mapped. Finally, uh, can only the connection person import the data into ARM? And, and that would be yes. So um, kind of just to reiterate that connection here as we showed the, the data flow um, and how this is all flowing. Uh, this is all talking about the ARM software um, running on the main computer of the person that has the EDC connection. So that would be um, that point person or persons. And, that, and that's why we have that EDC as an add-in. Um, so you choose which computers, which ARM license serial numbers um, should have that capability. Um, and, and maybe you don't, maybe you have one person be the exporter and maybe three people are the importers and you would just have their ARM, of course, would still have that same connection. They would just be instructed, don't push the export, don't push anything out to the cloud, but their ARMs could pull it in. So of course they wouldn't have to do all of the, the functionality with the connection, but you could have, um, you could purchase connections for anyone who would want to have their ARM see the cloud and bring data in. So yes, that is tied. That connection person is less of a person from a technical standpoint. It is a specific ARM license. So this is an add-on, much like if you've, if you've worked with our ST, for example, that is an add-on. You say it's this license that I want to have these summary across trials add in, added into. So, so we kind of use that term add in, hopefully to kind of imagine it's really additional functionality for an existing computer, existing serial number license. Next question, we have people, you know, taking notes on a daily basis and those trials always change though we all have access to all of them. So the connection person need to constantly be importing and exporting those files or are they always available to everyone? So I would say the, the export could occur just once. You could have one person send all of the trial definitions out once. If, if you have the, the assessment columns planned out um, correctly, you know, uh, as far as, as you would want or have all the SEs and, and things ready to be able to make the assessments that, that you need with AR Mobile, you could send it out once. Um, so you would not need somebody constantly 
exporting the definitions out if you did not want. Um, but on the import side, that I think would be um, more frequent. You, you would need somebody, you would want somebody to continue to load in the, the data from the cloud into the trial files would be a best practice. Um, from a technical standpoint, of course, as long as you export the data out to the cloud, that data will be in the cloud folder. So from a technical standpoint, there wouldn't have to be a rush to get it imported in um, just from, from the technical side. It, it, will, it will remain in that folder um, completely untouched and ready to be imported until it is imported into the trial. So hopefully that's, hopefully that's helpful. helpful. I think you would want that connection person, probably a best practice is that connection person who has the EDC, they should probably have access to all the trials all the time to be able to make sure that the data is imported in would be the best, I think the best approach um, for you. Yeah, yep, you can set uh, assessments from the mobile app. So yeah, if you don't, if you, if by the nature of your, your research, you, you can't say before you start the day exactly what assessments you're gonna do, that's just fine. Um, we showed here, I'll just go to this next screen here. Oh, when you're selecting the assessments, there's a plus button and you can bring in an SE, copy a, a description from a previous column or hand enter the, the header to create a column. And then one other question here about uh, GPS coordinates. Uh, is Aaron working on the ability to enter um, GPS coordinates for like the one corner and then kind of auto populate GPS data for all other plots. Um, we are working on some geospatial features for the ARM software. So this is kind of outside of ARM mobile. Um, and I don't know enough of the specifics to answer yes or no to your specific question, um, but I know that, yep, the, the polygon shape files, that is a direction we're going with ARM. So I think that probably is a yes to your question, but again, I don't, I don't, I'm not a master of shape files just yet, but I, I think so. That's that's a direction we are going with ARM here in the, in the near future. So just kind of related to the to the GPS coordinates, um, we're, we'll be able to essentially have your trial map of your trial be. Uh, geolocated, kind of let you just be able to put it on a, a Google map and it knows right where it's at in the world as opposed to now where it's just a picture. So, all right, I made it through the questions and we've also made it to the end of our hour. Um, I am available for a few more minutes if, if there are still some questions, if you're typing away and, and, and trying to sneak it in uh, in the last moment, I have a couple more minutes if there are questions, um, but certainly we appreciate you joining us today. Um, really, really excited for this, this new app. Um, of course, with new things, there's always questions and concerns. So um, definitely get a hold of your, your GDM representative um, and uh, we can have a discussion. I think that's, uh, especially as we start uh, I think we we need to learn more, at least especially here in in our office. We don't do any research ourselves here in the state. So um, hearing what your group does and then kind of talking about the options and what might fit you best, um, I think will be will be the way this proceeds, at least to start. And then as we learn more about how groups are implementing this, um, it might become a little more automated of ordering it, but. I think especially for now, it's, it's kind of a discussion. How is this gonna fit together? What can we use? Um, what's the best way to, to utilize this? Especially now that there is, it's really a data collection discussion, not so much just ARM mobile, um, but what's, what's the best way for us to take notes with ARM, whether it's a tablet with the TDCX or whether it's the mobile app or both. So thank you all for, for joining. I'll repeat the, the cost here real quick. Um, as well. So the, the connection 
um, component. That's that, that head person um, that exports and imports to ARM. That is 275 US dollars. And then uh, per, you know, per person you choose to have that connection. And then the data plan is company-wide and that is $250 US um, per, per company. And that's per 50,000 data points. So if your company were to use 140,000 data points uh, this next year, then when you pay your maintenance the following, you know, the following year, then you'll have three data plans. So it would be $750 would be the total. Again, that's kind of after the fact to start this very first year, it would just be 250. We'll start everyone with the 250 and after their maintenance goes through, then it'll start to match their usage. So thanks everybody. Hopefully we'll see you at some of the, the trainings here coming up so we can show you um, how to utilize those SEs. Um, we talked about that a little bit today. So hopefully you'll see some of the advantages. It'll, it'll really help that mobile app usage um, and I think in general, help your ARM usage as well. So thanks everybody. As far as sending out the, the answers there, um, I would say we'll, we'll send out the recording. So, so feel free to watch the recording again um, we're definitely working on our materials for Air and Mobile right now. Our website's pretty sparse. Um, you know, this is really our first big announcement, and we're going to continue to build um, content and, and materials. So um, just be just be kind of look on the on the lookout for that. Um, but yeah, I think this recording will be the best spot to see see those answers in the future. So.